everybody knows that COVID sucks, right? Everybody, well, most people know it. Thank you, I have for one enhancement robot. Uh, it shut a lot of things down. It has made things like uh, schooling very tough, very tough to deal with. Um, however, it's a virus. It's communicable. It's dangerous, and we are almost, almost, I think. On the cusp of victory, if we keep it up, you know what I mean. Like we just gotta, we just gotta like press on a little bit more. Press on. Obviously, we couldn't just have 15 days of reasonable adult human beings uh, existing in America without them flipping their shit like it's some entitled babies. Uh, so we just have to chip away. Hopefully, this uh, this uh, uh, vaccine course works, and it seems to be uh, all the data is showing of. D- that things are decreasing. Um, however, Ben Shapiro, Ben Shapiro, of course, of course, manages to have a bad take about it. <sighs> ben Shapiro wants teachers to go back to school. The most obvious example of this, of course, is the teachers' unions. So teachers' unions are basically now saying they just don't want to teach ever again. Now, for my... No, they're not. They're not saying that. No, they're not. No teachers are saying they never want to teach again. Guess what? It's their job. They, in a lot, a lot of teachers like it. Money, I'm fine with that. Seriously, I hope everybody homeschools. I hope everybody pulls their kids out of schools, puts them in parochial <laughs> schools, puts them in private schools, puts them in parochial schools and private schools. Those are still teachers. What? Those are still. <laughs> those are still. Those are still that. <laughs> take the money out of the out of the public school system. Take these teachers' unions at their words. Right? They don't want to teach. Fine. I don't want you teaching my kids because I think that you guys are basically garbage at it generally anyway. Do you think Ben Shapiro's kids are in public schools? No, see, if they're private, they don't have unions. That's definitely true. Uh, Possum Seeds, thanks for the giving one to Potato Number, maybe? I don't know. Does he have kids? Oh, yeah, he has kids. You see, I don't know if you're aware of this, but Ben Shapiro's wife is a doctor. And she has never, not once, she has never orgasmed, okay? And he's proud of that. I think that the teachers' unions protect the worst teachers at the expense of the best teachers. Mm-hmm. I think the- It definitely protects bad teachers, that's for sure. But, um... But part of the teaching union that is good is that it is that it allows you to have it's it's such a strong union that's kind of like the point right i don't know the teachers union is important uh all the conservatives caring about teachers now that there's a deadly virus but i'm sure that's a coincidence of course of course of course you value seniority over quality in your teachers i think that you create ridiculous educational missions that have very little to do with the education of the american public school child the american public school child so you guys don't want to come into school good news Millions and millions of Americans have realized over the past year they're not sure they want you teaching their kids. But if you are a member of the Democratic Party and you're (laughs) a member of the Democratic Party, Uh, maybe she's orgasm more from a watery bathroom visit. God damn it. Uh, Let's apply that logic to police unions, Ben, shall we? I know, right? Pushes that public education done by teachers unions is one of the jewels of the American system. Then um, wouldn't you stand up to the teachers unions at these point and say and say, you know, guys, you really should go back to work. No, it's a, it's a, it's a pandemic. It's a pandemic. Has he, I don't think Ben's ever been in a public school before. I don't think Ben's been in a public school because, because obviously like the, the, the point here is not, I don't want to teach because they're teaching remotely. They're still doing their job. Like, like kids are still doing that. Like most, most people agree. We want kids to be going to school. We do. I do. I was an educator. I want people to do that. I've taught in classes. It's a good time. Uh, you learn better in person, obviously. And there's a lot of rules, especially at the college level, uh, that are uh, definitely severely negatively impacting the students and how they learn. Absolutely. 100%. But, but not during a fucking pandemic, bro. Good call, like, just wait a little call. bit. It'll be fine. <laughs> If you would have just listened in the first place, this wouldn't even be an issue. 
But people like Ben Shapiro are like, mm, actually, I don't want to wear a mask. And, and it's against the Constitution for you to tell me to wear a mask. And frankly, I just say millions of Americans aren't going to wear a mask. So why even do it? Why even do it? Like... Bro, we, like, we, we have, like, like other regulations that are important. Like, uh, like I don't know, not allowing uh, a, t a ton of fucking arsenic in your cereal or some shit like that. Like, these are important things. It's not different. Dark Phoenix, they spent nine months. Uh, and no problem, I will, of course, stand up for teachers. It's a hard job, dude. Some teachers suck. Let's be real. Some teachers suck. Most teachers are trying their best. And it's a severely underpaid job, and that's probably the reason a lot of the teachers do suck is because they're paid trash wages. There's a new study out. That new study suggests that there really is no elevated risk for teachers above the general population. What do you mean, what do you mean elevated risk for teachers? Wait, 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 wait. Does Ben Shapiro think that pe that teachers are, like, first of all, worried about just themselves personally when they talk about, like, getting COVID? Like, sure, your initial reaction is, like, I don't want to get COVID. But broadly, my worry is not about myself. I don't really have breathing problems unless I'm sleeping. I, I snore. But, like, like I don't have, I don't have, like, asthma or any, like, like lung condition or anything like that. Except for blowing fat clouds when I'm stoned. But besides that, uh, I'm worried about giving my chain smoker 60-something-year-old mom, 61, 2, 62-year-old mom, uh, uh, COVID, right? Because she has bad, she's got a bad lung. She smokes constantly. <laughs> She's she's like her her insides are just an ashtray. So like I don't, I don't want her to get murdered by by my decisions. You know what I mean? <laughs> like most people are worried about their their other people. They're not worried about themselves for the most part. Uh, it targets the teacher gene. Uh, maybe Ben would like to see a picture of my COVID fucked lungs. If he wanted, I'd allow a doctor to open my chest. So the doctors could rub Ben's face in it. That's probably not what you should do. But I hope that you get, uh, it clears up over time, Rob Blum, but I doubt it. Um, bro, older teachers at my school have gotten sick. I still go in person. Most all of them tell us they're more worried about us or immunocompromised family. Of course. Of course they are. Of course they're worried about that shit. That, of course, is not a shock at all. We've known this for quite a while, that there really is no elevated public risk in terms of the in terms of teachers over the general population. Ben Shapiro cannot fathom someone going like, but what about another person's safety? Population. In fact, you would imagine they're probably at, at less risk generally, especially if they're teaching young kids. What? Young kids are not transmitting this disease in the same way that older children are. That's not true. What? No, 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 no. <laughs> First of all, young kids aren't transmitting it in the in the way that older kids are only due to exposure. Not that they can't. Young kids are fucking Petri dishes. Anyone who's taught for like a month has gotten sick. A month. You get sick immediately. They just don't have symptoms. They may be asymptomatic carriers. Most young kids, either because they're not out and being, you know, they're not they're not forced to work because they're children, so they're not coming into contact with these people, or they have it and you just didn't fucking know. That's it. Like, what? This isn't not transmutable because you happen to be a toddler. Like, it, COVID doesn't go, hmm, you like Dora the Explorer? Well, I guess I'm not going to go that way. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm gonna avoid all, 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 all door. I don't want him. I don't want him to think I'm like swiper. Like that would be terrible. Swiper, no swiping. I'm not gonna COVID, no COVIDing. I don't know what COVID sounds like. What's COVID's voice? Kids are just diseases that walk around and have personalities and eventually turn into teenagers. It also happens to be the case that younger teachers, right? If you're a 22 year old teacher, for second graders, your level of risk is really, really minimal. It's much lower than you going to a bar that same night. But in a bunch of different... Why would you go to a bar that night? ...different states. We've got bars that are open and schools that are closed. This... <laughs> we got bars that are open and schools that are closed. Yeah, yeah. Yes, close the bar too then. Yes. 100% close the bar. Fine with that. <laughs> what? Ugh. Why are conservatives so stupid? What are you even conserving besides dumb? 
Is this accessory to genocide? It feels like Ben is totally cool with a mass calling of educated people for some reason. Hmm, wonder why. Probably because actual smart people don't buy into his fash parade. Jesus Christ. He's so stupid. Which is madness. Half a million people, by the way. Half a million. According to The Hill, the Chicago's Teachers Union voted to defy Chicago Public Schools' reopening plans for teachers and staff due to coronavirus concerns, the union announced on Sunday. The Teachers Union, for the nation's third largest school district, decided to allow all educators to conduct work remotely starting on Monday. The day kindergarten through eighth grade staff were expected to return in person. So these are no. specifically teachers for young kids. Yeah, fuck them. The CTU reported 86% of its 25,000 members participated in the electronic vote on Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Mm -hmm. 71% of voting members decided to deny the district's current plan to come back to in-person learning. Good. They get to vote on that. That's how that works. That's democracy in the workplace. That's how it works. Yes, that's good. Hey, I don't want to do a thing. Okay, let's have a vote. All right, we're not doing the thing. That's that's fine. That's how voting works. Everyone's fine. Squirrely says, I own a bar and I've been closed for a year. Ben can fuck all the way off. Squirrely, where's your bar at? We're going to it when everything opens up. Corn cob parade straight through Squirrely's bar. First round's on me. Oh, no, how dare the teachers' union. They are paid to protect and represent teachers, protect and represent teachers. I know, right? A CTU release said it means the overwhelming majority of you have chosen safety. CPS did everything yes. possible to divide us by instilling fear through threats of retaliation. You still chose unity, solidarity, and to collectively act as one. By the way, this just demonstrates, once again, what? public sector unions are a blight on the American political system. Public sector unions are a blight. Of course. Of course. He's just anti-union. That's all it is. Public sector unions would bargain collectively against the taxpayer. Yeah, what? Yes. Did you? Yes. Did you know that if you are you if you have a government job, you don't just get to be fucking rolled over? Yeah, true. And pay off the politicians to bargain on their own behalf. It's one of the most corrupt deals in all of American politics. It's not corrupt to have a say in your labor. What the fuck? It's he Ben Shapiro thinks it's corrupt to fucking to fucking have a say in how your employment works. What? <laughs> Did you know that that <laughs> teachers are taxpayers as well? Not only are teachers taxpayers, teachers are taxpayers to their literal fucking fucking district. You know, the place that their property taxes go toward the school they work at. What do you, what? <laughs> like, what a fucking loser, dude. How the fuck, it's, by the way, it's corrupt to like, to like vote on your own, the, the, how, how your, your own labor is enforced. Okay, buddy. Ben's economic professor basically preached Reaganomics to him. Are we surprised? No. No. Maybe the most corrupt deal. Essentially, you now have unions that pay to get politicians elected. They then negotiate with the politicians against the taxpayer, and the politicians use the union money in order to get reelected. It's truly impressive legal grift. The Chicago Sun <laughs> Times labeled the vote unusually close for CTU labor actions because 94% of voting members usually decide when to strike. The Chicago district's official sent a letter to families on Sunday saying the return date for teachers will be delayed until Wednesday to allow for more time for negotiations and to avoid risking disruption to student learning. Now, again, there's no science to back this. The science to suggest that these teachers are at risk and that they can't come back until X, Y, or Z, it's just nonsense. It's, it's not true. It, it is true. First of all, it's true. Uh, it's not about whether or not teachers can get more sick than, than anybody else. Obviously, teachers are more likely to get sick than students because teachers are, guess what, older than students. Uh, but usually, again, like teachers have spouses, teachers have family members, teachers have parents, teachers have older people that they interact with in the community. They might go to church. They might fucking, you know, a lot of teachers coach, so they interact with, with people in the community a lot. Like, like, what does he think a teacher does? They're usually incredibly... Like, teachers are, especially in rural communities and small towns, but, I mean, this is Chicago, but, like, even even so, like, they're often very active in the community at large. This vid is not spit up. This is just how Ben talks. Like, like, <laughs> there's so many more things that go into the decision besides, am I going to die from COVID? No, it's not about that. It's about every other interaction that you have. He's so stupid. 
In fact, there are serious questions as to whether this particular teacher strike is legal under the regulations. No, it's not. But it's not just it's Chicago's teachers' just, unions. Just, just strike. It's in Ohio as well. Good. According to W. Ohio, a, a red state, by the way. WTOL. The largest teachers' unions in the state are responding after Governor Mike DeWine announced 96% of public school districts in Ohio have signed a form committing to in-person learning by March 1st. The unions, including the Toledo Federation of Teachers, say in a joint statement that Governor DeWine is using vaccines as a bargaining chip to open schools by March 1st. The statement says teachers, students, families, and cities will face dire consequences if schools are pressured to reopen before it is safe to do so. Yep. Okay, it's just a lie. It's not true. Okay, so they're pushing that. It's not a lie. It's not a lie. It is unsafe to spread a disease. It's not a good thing. New Jersey teachers, they say that they don't want to come back <sighs> until every single student in these schools is tested. Good. Um, what? Do they think that one student that tests positive could spread it to every other person? Yes. Yes, Ben. Yes. Actually, yes. Surprise. Yes. Again, that is nuts. First of all, that's not nuts. The false positive rate on the test alone would probably make it impossible to open the schools. Unless you test again and confirm the false positive, then, which is what happens. They usually do the rapid testing, then they do the slower one to confirm the positive test because that's the point. Like, what? <laughs> but beyond that, are you insane? Okay, the children are not the chief vector of the transmission. Children are not the... Uh, it, in a situation where children are the number one demographic within a building, they would, of course, be the chief vector of transmission. Just because children at large aren't the chief vector of transmission in your community because they are children and they aren't out in the community often, when they end up at school in close proximity, 30-ish plus kids to a room with a teacher, set six to eight teachers per day, contact sports, like like band practice, like, like fucking, fucking, you know, like locker rooms, math, they chew on their pencil and pass it somewhere. They cough in a classroom. Like, what are you talking about, dude? Then they, yes, they do become, for the community of that specific building, become the chief uh, uh, vector f through which transmission would occur because they're the most populous group. What? This is just... <laughs> what? <laughs> it's so stupid, dude. Uh, 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 children aren't the chief back there's fewer children than anybody else what are you talking about of course they're not the chief vector but guess what if they were the bulk of the population guess who would spread the most covid children it's so stupid we don't have to look into the claim we don't have to look into it it's just wrong the, the claim has been looked into it's it's not correct also, the children as vector thing was specious to begin with as we homeschool more kids become more like adults and their social habits make them even worse as asymptomatic vectors. Of course, absolutely. But, I, but again, a, a kid can't like, you know, drive to the supermarket and forget to wear a mask or not use hand sanitizer or go to the gas station and grab the handle of someone who just coughed on their hand and used it right before you and there's still particles alive. You know what I mean? Like, they, 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 they can't be trading in dirty, dirty change at 7-Eleven. They're kids. So that's why you see them not being chief vectors. But once they're in a community, like a school, of course they are. You can tell because every fucking adult gets sick and, and flus pass through schools quickly. It's really stupid. It's really stupid. Like, anyone who's worked at a school for, like, again, like a month, you just, you know, you're going to get sick. You're going to get sick fast. You need to be cranking that emergency, making sure that you're good, sanitizing your hands, ensuring that you send kids home when they're sick and not just letting them suffer in the corner. Like, just be like, dude, just go ahead and go home. Like, we'll take care of it. I'll work with you. Like, what are you talking about, dude? There's more danger of you hanging out in the teachers' union with the other teachers than of you teaching the kids. No. Okay, perhaps the, the greatest example of this insanity. Where's the claim coming from? He's just... So, the claim is coming from... They they look at the nat the population of the of the country and they go who transmits the disease most and they go oh children are lower because guess what children have not been out of the home in a year like they they haven't been going to school they've been they've been learning remotely 
and they don't travel as much as adults do because they don't have to work. So yeah, of course their transmission rates are lower. It's literally just stupid. We that's that's I mean, that's the answer that you that you keep asking about. That is the answer. They just are bad about reading statistics. Is members of the Washington Teachers Union claiming that yes. reopening schools for in-person learning is an example of white supremacy and saying that if we value the mental health of students, that is a form of white privilege. According to the Daily Wire, echoing comments made by... According to the Daily Wire. You are the Daily Wire. You cannot say according to the Daily Wire when you talk about this stuff. What do you talk... According to myself... At Chicago Teachers Union months ago, that reopening schools for in-person instruction is both racist and sexist. The president of the Pasco Association of Educators, Scott Wilson, made a series of unhinged, controversial remarks during a Pasco school board meeting, according to our friend Jason Rance over at KTTH. The comments were captured on video as the Board of Education conducts its meetings on Zoom amidst the coronavirus pandemic. So... <laughs> I don't know where he's getting this from. I would imagine that we're losing context and the conversation was about high transmission rates in black communities uh, because there's high transmission rates in, in poor communities. And, of course, in um, the Midwest, especially in Chicago, Cleveland, uh, Ohio, Detroit, stuff like that, uh, they have high black populations with lots of poverty. Um, due to, of course, <laughs> systemic racism. Um, and, uh, and, and so it makes a lot of sense that the black community would be negatively affected by such a thing. Um, and I assume the conversation was we have to consider the impact on the black community if we are to reopen schools. Um, and if you think that it's not going to be a big problem, it is contributing to white supremacy. I don't know if I agree with it contributing wholly to white supremacy, but I definitely think depending on how you frame your argument, it could be. Yes. This particular teacher's union head compared the effort to reopen schools to the riot at the U.S. Capitol. Wilson said, there are decisions to be made. You stand on the lawn of the U.S. Capitol as people break down barriers and head to the doors. Do you follow? You stand at the governor's mansion. The crowd breaks down barriers to enter the grounds. Do you follow or do you choose a different way? We must not ignore the culture of white supremacy and white privilege. Yes. He said, we speak of equity. We speak of the care of students. Yet we listen and attend to voices saying, reopen everything. I'm free to breathe, supporting white privilege. Okay, in reality, the people who are the most harmed by all of these stay-at-home orders have been children who are black and Hispanic. Because disproportionately, kids who are black and Hispanic go to public schools. And particularly their parents need them in the public schools so they can go work. <sighs> Because in single-parent households, which are disproportionately in black and Hispanic families, if you can't drop your kid at school, how exactly are you going to go to work that day? So he agrees, interestingly, without, of course, he'll never, he'll never admit this, of course. But he agrees that, that like minority communities do tend to be poorer. It's interesting that he, he knows this when it serves his argument. But when it doesn't serve his argument, it's like, ah, oh, you just don't think black people can succeed because they're black. Ah, oh, soft bigotry of low expectations, I see. Smart, Ben. Real smart. So, like, so like, he totally knows there's a problem. He refuses to address the reason why. <laughs> As if Ben Shapiro gives a shit if black individuals uh, have educated children, right? Do you think Ben Shapiro wants black families to be higher educated? I feel like that's the last thing he wants because then he loses states like Georgia. And this is madness. So Joe Biden was asked about all of this, right? So Joe Biden gets asked about the teachers unions and whether they should return to schools. And Joe Biden sidesteps the question. Because again, one of the, what's the it's amazing. You hear all he the might, time about the corruption of money in politics. You heard this from the Bernie Sanders crew. Well, there's so much money on politics. It's so terrible. Oh. oh, he'll take he'll take any opportunity to do whatever this is. He's so bad at doing Bernie Sanders, but he thinks he's funny, which is really sad, dude. Like, d does nobody hang out with Ben Shapiro and go like, "Hey, Ben, can you not?" <laughs> it's really frustrating to listen to this. Also, I would love to receive a one hundred million dollar investment from the teachers' unions to go and door knock for me. I mean, it's just it's it's incredible. 
They're explicitly <coughs> bargaining against the interests of their own students. And then Joe Biden is out there defending them. And it, it is a high level form of corruption right in plain sight. The fact I thought you said he sidestepped the question. You, didn't say, you said, wait, wait, wait. You said Joe Biden sidestepped the question. And then now you're saying he supported him? Joe Biden teachers unions. I don't know. I'm going to type this in and see where it takes us. Let's see where it takes us. He may have sidestepped the question, but let's read it. What's the question? Uh, stop it. Biden's administration in recent weeks had set muddled and at times contradictory messages about his goal. On Tuesday night, the president said his 100-day goal was to have the most elementary schools open five days a week, seeming to conflict with his own press secretary, who said last week that schools would be considered open if they held in-person classes even one day a week. That's not really contradictory. Uh, <clears throat> Biden aides dismissed the controversy as a flare-up, blah, blah, blah. Uh, <laughs> Oh, so they're saying that this is a sidestep. Um, teachers unions said, have said they support reopening schools once officials are able to make buildings safer, but they need $130 billion included in Biden's proposed American Rescue Plan to make it happen, even if the bill passed Congress by the Democrats' mid-March deadline. It's unclear whether districts would be able to make changes in time to hasten school openings before the end of Biden's first 100 days. I mean, Joe Biden's fucking up in in, in some ways for sure. I wouldn't say passing it in the first 100 days, but not having schools open 100 days would be a failure of that promise. There are other promises he failed, like, like that we can talk about. The press is so weird about stuff, and so are leftists in general. Like, like good thing Joe Biden has done. Probably, probably this, this America Rescue Plan, if it gets passed, good thing. Bad thing, $2,000 checks, not a thing that he's done. 1400 did you guys get 1400 uh no uh <clears throat> ben shapiro has ever listened to a bernie sanders speak i have no idea um bad thing he did didn't he didn't he bomb uh fucking syria today like that's bad that's his bad stuff but like good stuff is is some of this other shit the covid response has been very very good so i don't know man like like why don't we just why don't we just like <laughs> focus on some of this like, just, I don't know. I don't know. The way people talk about stuff is so fucking sad sometimes, dude. Like, sometimes people we don't like do good stuff, and sometimes they do bad stuff. So let's just focus on the bad stuff and the good stuff and and, and, pretend, and not do a genetic fallacy and pretend like the person who does it matters. You know what I mean? Like, ugh. <clears throat> oh, it happens on your... Um, uh, oh, student student debt, yeah, student debt needs to needs to happen. So hopefully this kind of shit happens. <clears throat> yeah, I mean there's there's absolutely things he's fucked up on. So so do that count count that against him. I don't know. There's some people that that like a conservative. There's some leftists that make hating the libs like a personality. And it's like <sighs> it's not super helpful, bro. <laughs> Can we can we also like 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 deal in reality and not like if a lib does a good thing is it a good thing? Yes. I got my Fed return and didn't get the fourteen hundred, so I'm not sure. Interesting. I thought one of my friends said they got it. Libs are pretty bad, but like when they do a good thing, it's still a good thing. It's irrelevant. It's irrelevant if they who they are when they do the good or the bad. It is irrelevant, and we need to stop pretending it is relevant. And we also need to stop pretending like you have to be right for a hundred straight years before you are considered a pure leftist. Like fuck off. The fucking shit drives me nuts, dude. The fact that labor unions have this much power with our federal and state governments is nuts. It's nuts. And the, the fact that the What if he's doing the good thing while simultaneously bombs Syria? The good thing is good and the bad thing is still bad. Easy. National Labor Relations Act is so biased in favor of collective bargaining that would be considered collusion if it were done by employers. But as soon as it is done by employees, it is now considered not collusion, but something magical. The NLRA is a terrible piece of- Wait, 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 wait. It is, of course it's collusion when the employers do it and the employees just have to do it. That's the difference, dude. What the fuck? He's so stupid. He's so stupid. Employers not giving you a democratic say in your labor 
is bad regardless, right? Regardless. It, it, have oh, the, all you all having having the actual having the actual democratic say like in a co-op of your or in a union in this case having a de- democratic say in your employment and the and, and how your labor is used and how you're compensated and all the things that go into it that's the good thing why it would be bad if the employers did it i have no idea why he's so stupid about this antipodian squid thanks so much for the raid dude appreciate it welcome ink squad of legislation. Okay, but put that aside. The very existence of public sector unions is, in me- in most cases, a blight on the republic. But here is Joe- Most cases. So he's, he's leaving space for the police. Joe Biden, this is just an example, refusing to condemn teachers' unions that are cutting directly. Here's Captain Science here. Okay. As kids are being put out of school all across the nation, again, even though we're reopening outdoor dining and we're reopening indoor dining, here, here's Joe Biden. Do you believe, sir, that teachers should return to schools now? I believe we should make school classrooms safe and secure for the students, this is so, for the a, teachers. Such a fine answer. And for the, the help that's in those schools maintaining the facilities. We need new ventilation systems in this those schools. This is a good answer. We need Wait. testing. For people coming in and out of the classes. Wait, how is this a bad answer? We need testing for teachers as well as students. Yep. And we need the capacity, the capacity to know that, in fact, the the, the circumstance in the school is safe and secure for everyone. <laughs> what? Wait, that's the best answer I've ever heard Joe Biden give on this subject. Like, he, he, barely, he barely fucked up. That, that's a good answer. That's science forward. That is safety first. Hey, yes, I agree that we need kids in schools, but it doesn't make sense to put them in schools if they're going to have to leave because of a virus. And we're just going to shut down again because we were too hasty. What are you talking about? That was a very good answer. Okay, so basically I'm just going to avoid all of this. By the way, my kids have been in school since the beginning of the year. What? No problem. Who cares if your kid's fine, Ben? What are you talking about? Because it doesn't include the how. Ben Shapiro has never been interested in in what a Democrat has to say insofar as what prescriptive measures they're going to take for a problem. And and also, that literally did include the how, I suppose. If you take it into context that, that the, the uh, $130 billion uh, proposal literally gives the how, right, that he's talking about. I, it, and my kids are two of them under the age of seven are in school and uh, are they at public schools ben are they at public schools do you i wonder if ben shapiro's kids go to a school where everyone is tested constantly i wonder if they go and they have like thermometers at the door and turn people away huh hmm i wonder if it's also a kind of a low population school you know and they probably have like you know, they don't have 30 kids to a room. They have dedicated teachers. They probably have study cl- classes. Like, like uh, I don't know. I don't know, buddy. They probably all have vaccines. Yeah, exactly. Um, there's been no problem. They've taken precautions like masking. They put up a little plexiglass on the on the tables. The t- wow. Teachers are there. The teachers have not been infected. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. So Ben Shapiro's ben, ben Shapiro says, okay, it's fine. They take some precautions. They have masks and they put plexiglass on the desks do you know how much it would cost for every public school to install plexiglass barriers on their desks (laughs) they don't have the means for this what are you talking about dude of course of course he's like oh my kids go to a very very you know expensive school so they have all these all these all these all these facets to protect themselves with okay but apparently it's the end of the world. Again, the, the willingness of the media to overlook the insane corruption of keeping millions and millions, tens of millions of school kids at home so teachers' unions can sit at home and get rich. Get rich? Get rich? Ben Shapiro! Teachers are not getting rich! Average wage teacher. What are you talking about? This is fucking rich, bro. 
This is the average wage. You know what the starting wage is? What the fuck? How much do teachers make when they first start? Under 40K. Good call, baby bird. Under 40K. And that depends on what kind of school you're going to. What are you fucking talking about? Just sitting home and getting rich. Eat a dick. Cold Sarah, thanks so much for the 23 months, dude. <clears throat> That's twice what I made and I teach college. Exactly. I'm surprised because if you teach college, you have a master's degree, right, Namertech? It's probably the, uh, the area you live in. It's a pretty low population. Or are you just getting fucked? Wouldn't be surprised if you're also getting fucked. Or if you're um, adjunct or something. Bear in mind, they usually work off hours to grade and plan lessons. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's so much you don't get paid for when you're when you're a teacher. So much. I mean, really, the unions are getting rich. Not the people who are members of the unions. The un Oh, okay, okay. Now you're saying the unions are getting rich. Unions themselves. Good. It's super corrupt. Good, 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 good. He at least, he at least agrees that teachers are underpaid. So why don't we pay teachers more, Ben? Hmm? How, how tied in? Is the Biden administration to these... You think he'd be for raising wages for teachers? Unions? So tied in that Randy Weingarten was originally considered. Mm, job requires master's, adjunct-only positions. That's what I thought, adjunct. Yup. So, so usually they, they give the excuse for an adjunct professor is that you are also working a normal job, right? So you should be able to make a living wage. That's fucking stupid, bro. So I was making I was making more money on YouTube while I was going to college by a little bit, not a lot. Uh than some prof some of my professors. How fucking stupid is that, dude? How fucking dumb is that, bro? That's so stupid. Which is why I'm not teaching for the record. I would have had to take a big pay cut for that. Which is trash. But I get to teach you guys now and we get to have like we get to have like a like a back and forth and educate each other. This is a more honest version of me being able to teach. I can swear and shit. This is much better, personally. I still get the I still get the the juice out, you know what I mean? But uh but yeah. I really I would like to teach again someday. A possibility for Secretary of Education, the head of the American Federation of Teachers. Well, here she was this week saying that she stands behind teachers who are refusing to go back to school. Of course, we stand 100 percent behind the Chicago Union. But, you know, the issue really is, you know, just like we said last summer when we said we would support these safety um, strikes. Uh -huh. The issue is we know that in school learning is really important and vital for children. Yeah. And so we are trying to take the steps in different places to make that happen. Sure. Okay, so, yeah, those teachers unions, they're all for the students, though. Facts. What? By the way, what was her name? Randy Weingarten. Randy Weingarten. <laughs> is this not Rhonda, is it? American Federal. Is it Rhonda? Did they get this wrong? I'm looking at uh, employees, seeing the president. Okay, I'm seeing Rhonda on unionfacts.com. Trying to see. So she's the president of the union. And she makes half a million dollars a year. But she's not making money because they're not teaching. You know what I mean? So I'm assuming that's Rhonda. Let's open. Gross salary is this, and then there's there's uh she's an attorney. Yeah, exactly. That's usually that makes sense. You because unions and stuff, like um I was a member of the union for the, the post office for a little bit. Um, the union, the union officials are like, uh, actually have a kind of a hard job, but, 
um, like the secretary of treasury, you can see this total compensation is, is dwindling. Now, don't get me wrong. These people are making six figures, but they're directors of these, of these different union directors, right? They're not sitting at home getting rich because people aren't teaching. They need teachers that have money that pay union dues to do this. You know what I mean? And like now we're getting down into the, you know, like some of these people make nothing. You know what I'm saying? Look at these. Some of these people don't don't make anything. Some of these people make good livings doing this. And that's fine. I don't know. I disagree that there's a uh there's an incentive for them to just chill at home. <laughs> it's not really a thing. Not really a thing. Anyway. Ben Shapiro, big mad about about people not wanting their kids to 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 just die in school. Um, specifically, they don't want their kids bringing home stuff to die, uh, or to have other people die. Oh God! I just elbowed a spoon. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Elbowed a spoon. Drop the big elbow. Everything's fine. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, take that spoon. Fucking spoon right here. Um, <laughs> there's only one reason. There's only one reason to be a teacher, and it ain't the money. Well, there's more than one reason, but yeah, it's 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 uh, definitely not the money. Money is not one of them. Uh, anyway, so that's Ben Shapiro. He's dog shit. Surprise.